what if you want to keep your sourdough starter for a long time? Let's say you're moving across the country and you don't have any means of refrigerating your or even keeping your sourdough starter on a counter. Or let's say you have a good sourdough starter going and you want to send it to a friend in the mail. There are ways that you can do that and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So here I have my sourdough starter. I have actually fed it with rye flour and rye flour is almost like steroids for your sourdough starter. So if you have a sourdough starter that's not particularly active, just feed it a little bit of rye flour and you'll be surprised what you will find. So this is a good active sourdough starter and all we need really is a cookie sheet, baking tray, what have you. And you can either use a piece of parchment paper. I will not do that. I will actually put that aside. I will use a silicone mat that has been well loved and well used. And I'm going to show you the oven method, but I will talk about some other methods as well. So all you need to do really is just pour your sourdough starter onto your silicone mat or your parchment paper. And I'm not going to do, I'm not going to pour all of it. Let's save some. And you don't really need a whole lot actually for this method to work. And then you want to spread it out pretty thin and as even as you can because then it will also dry more evenly and you will not have any areas that are still a little bit moist. You know what? I can add a little bit more because last time I did this, I almost covered the whole thing. Okay, so we'll spread it nice and even. So now what? I have an oven that I can set so that it warms. And the way I do that is I set it to convection, which will turn on that little light at the back of the oven. And it will create just enough warmth and the air in the convection is moving. So it's gonna help dry out the sourdough starter. First, I'll show you that. I will not use the temperature setting. I will simply turn it to convection. You can hear the fan go on and I don't know if you could see this, but the light goes on. And that's just enough warmth and circulating air for me to dry it out. What are you gonna do if you don't have an oven setting like I do? What you can do is you can simply turn the temperature setting to the lowest setting and remember you don't want to cook your sourdough starter you just want to dehydrate it because if you cook it you will kill all the beneficial bacteria in it and then it's going to be dead and it's not going to do anything for you so you want the lowest setting some ovens go really low you can also sometimes separately turn on the light and then turn it to convection but you can also set it in a warm place Another good way if you have a dehydrator is to use the silicone mats for your dehydrator or use a parchment paper for your dehydrator and set it in your dehydrator. And then all you need to do, and again, there's no magic number, how long does it take, when is it ready, is basically you observe it. It needs to be completely dried out so that there's no mold that can grow and that it's really dry. So you want to overdo it almost more than underdo it. You need to watch it because depending on how thick your sourdough starter is, the humidity in your area when you're dehydrating it and all of these factors can play into how long it's actually gonna take to dehydrate sourdough starter. And now I'm gonna let this go on for a little bit and then when it's ready, I'm gonna show you what we'll do next. Before I talk about what's going on here, I just wanted to let you know that if you're a little bit baffled by the whole sourdough ex 
experience and your seller starter maybe is overwhelming you and you are looking for another method, not quite dehydrating it and making it completely inactive, but have it in a way that you can actually bake once or twice a week. I have created an online sourdough course in which I teach my super easy method how to make your own starter so that you can get to this point and how you can maintain it in the refrigerator and it's really flexible it's super simple it talks about all the little problems that can arise the issues with mold and how to deal with that and it gives you a bunch of recipes and i have the link both in the description box below this video so you can check it out and also up here this is some hours later and as i said before the time it takes to completely dehydrate and dry out your sourdough starter depends on the ambient humidity, how thick you put it on here, the hydration level of your sourdough starter. It also depends on the method that you're doing it. Now I want to show you something and this is exactly what I'm looking for. It is bone dry. When I tap it, it sounds like it sounds dry. <laughs> However, I did have some spots and I want to be really careful and I hope that you can see this. I will zoom in where it's not completely dried out. I will not use those for my long-term storage. I will break this piece off because this is completely dry. So I'm gonna move all of the pieces that are really dry. And if they're sticking to my silicone mat, I know that they're not quite dried out. And this one too is I can bend it before it breaks. Tells me it's still wet on the underside, so I will not use that. You have a couple of choices now. You can either just take a jar, and this is the very easy method. And I'm not sure about these guys here, so I will put this over here. And you can just simply put them in here, put a very tight lid on, label it. I'm often known for not very being very good at labeling, and sometimes it comes and bites me afterwards because I don't know exactly what's in it. However, label it, put a date on it, and it should be good forever. I cannot tell you that because I haven't lived that long, but I know that it does last months and it doesn't need refrigeration. It's really easy. You can put it in your kitchen cabinets or wherever. I would just keep it in a dark spot. And even though this is airtight because we don't want any moisture to creep in or any critters, I would also try to keep it in a cooler place and not necessarily somewhere where it's really hot above the stove or something like that. Um, the other thing that you can do, and for this, I have to pull out my little Cuisinart immersion blender with the, um, what do you call this attachment? Chopping attachment. And while I'm fighting with the cord here, all right, there we go. Now this is actually my preferred method. I simply dump this in here and these pieces. Now they should really sound bone dry by the time you put them in here. And the rest you can just leave out at room temperature. You can return it to either your oven or your dehydrator or however method you are using over here and then you grind it into a powder if you're not very set on having exactly pulverized then your little immersion blender attachment might be good enough you get these little flakes you can also put it in a Vitamix blender and then you really get a very fine, it's almost like a flower. And I will show you that here. These are some packets that I dehydrated earlier and I just keep them in these little bags and you can see they're almost like little granules. It was a different sourdough starter. This has more rye flour in it and this was a completely wheat white white wheat flour based one and now i'm going to show you how you can 
or rehydrated because this is only getting you halfway there. What do you do once you want to get your sourdough starter going again? What you can also do, and this is what I really love about it, is that if you have a bread that's mostly yeast based or something else and you want to infuse it with a little bit of a sourdough flavor, the complex flavor profile of the sourdough and some of the goodness, you can put that in there just like your flour. It might do something depending on how long you let it ferment. If it's sitting and rising for two to four hours, it might actually do something, but it's going to give you the flavor. And some people like the flavor, but don't necessarily want to wait that long. So this would be a good way to do it. When you're ready to rehydrate your sourdough starter, and that is when you're done with your move or you have sent it to your friend and your friend is wondering, how can I get it going? This is what you do. Just take a little spoon and you don't need a whole lot. Actually, I will take this whole packet here. The same that is true for making a sourdough starter is using filtered water or bottled water, but if your tap water has any chlorine in it, you want to avoid using that. And I just pour a little bit in here. I'll show that to you here. I would let that sit for a few hours and what you can do then is you can either feed it in pretty much equal parts in weight, flour and water and probably depending on how active this was and a whole bunch of other variables that I do talk about in my sourdough course, it should be going within two to three days. So it's not like instant, it's not gonna get because you get you gotta get these little beneficial cultures propped up again. You can also, what I teach in my easy sourdough starter method, how to make your own starter, you can add a little bit of a cultured dairy like buttermilk kefir yogurt to it and that will speed things along a little bit. And that's all you do. And if you're wondering about another method that's not quite this inactive and involved getting it going, I have a video right here in which I teach my very popular easy maintenance method where you don't need any feedings and any discards and it totally works with your schedule. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in that video.